Just when the world-honored one was at the Bamboo Grove Monastery and was spreading the teachings in four directions, the neighboring state of Vaishali was struck by famine and epidemic. People died one after the other, and everyone was filled with fear, not knowing what to do. The nobles in power had invited one of the six masters of the non-Buddhist teachings to drive away the demons. But because of the influence of another strong faction, messengers were sent to the world-honored one. King Bimbisara, relaying the tragic situation, asked the world-honored one to come and instruct them. The Buddha consented to this request, and the king repaired the road leading to the river Ganges and had his subjects escort the Buddha. The Buddha crossed the river Ganges and having gone as far as 30 miles, set his feet on the land of Vaishali. Immediately, the forces of the demons waned and the epidemic gradually subsided. The disciple Ananda chanted the Ratna Sutra and, circling the castle walls, sprinkled water about. The demons finally fled, and the epidemic was completely eradicated. The Buddha stayed at Vaishali for two months to teach the Dharma and then returned to the Bamboo Grove Monastery. Once again, the world-honored one left the Bamboo Grove Monastery, headed west toward Varanasi, and stayed at the Deer Park. One day the world-honored one gave his disciples instructions on the Dharma, my disciples, it was here at Varanasi that the Buddha set into motion the wheel of the highest Dharma, this was never done by anyone else or at any other place in this world. By this the teaching of the Four Noble Truths was made clear and presented. What are the Four Noble Truths, you may ask? They are the truths of suffering, the cause of suffering, the extinction of suffering, and the way leading to the extinction of suffering. Disciples, it was truly here that the wheel of the highest dharma was set into motion. O oh my disciples, you must revere Shariputra and Madhulyana and accept them as your teachers. They are wise and are teachers of those who follow the ways of purity. O oh my disciples, Shariputra is like the mother who gave birth to you and Madhulyana is like the mother who raised you. Shariputra guides those who have just entered the Sangha and Madhulyana elevates them to reach enlightenment. Shariputra can instruct you on the Dharma through the Four Noble Truths. Having said this, the Buddha left the hall and went into his room. After the Buddha left the hall, Shariputra addressed those present, friends, the Buddha, here at Deer Park, taught the highest Dharma, which was never before spoken by anyone anywhere in this world. The Buddha elucidated the Four Noble Truths of Suffering, the Cause of Suffering, the Extinction of Suffering, and the Way Leading to the Extinction of Suffering. Friends, what is the truth of suffering? It means that birth is suffering, old age is suffering, death is suffering, and worry, sorrow, pain, anxiety, and agony are all suffering. Not having that which one wants is suffering. All in all, Human existence is in itself suffering. What is birth? Every being is born into a specific species and inherits the conditions that are a part of that species. What are calamities and pain, and how does one suffer extreme mental anguish? What is sadness? When calamities strike and the pain is felt, one is bewildered and saddened, and in deep grief one cries out in agony. What is suffering? It is the pain that one feels with one's body. What is affliction? It is the suffering that one experiences with one's mind. What is agony? It is the state in which one becomes heartbroken and hopeless as one encounters misfortune and suffering. What is the suffering resulting from not having what one wants? It is when a person wishes not to be born even when the conditions to be born are all present. Likewise, human life cannot escape old age, sickness, death, sorrow, or anguish, and yet a person prays that such misery does not befall himself, this is all suffering. Overall, what does it mean that human existence itself is suffering? It means that existence is the result of impurities and thus cannot be characterized by anything else. What is the cause of suffering? It is the thirst of craving, or defilement, which brings forth a new future existence. There are three kinds of craving, 
the craving of lust, the craving for existence, and the craving for extinction. What is the extinction of suffering? It is the state in which the thirst of craving is made completely extinct, and all traces of impurities are gone. What is the way leading to the extinction of suffering? It is the eightfold path that leads to the extinction of the cause of suffering. It is right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right meditation. Right view is to acquire clear insight regarding the teaching of the Four Noble Truths. Right thought is thought divorced from craving and devoid of anger and hatred. Right speech is speech free from falsehood, backbiting, and idle talk, it is speaking the truth at all times. Right action is to refrain from killing, stealing, and adultery, and to act with compassion. Right livelihood means never to indulge in actions unbecoming a monk. Right effort means to prevent evil that has not yet arisen and to discard that which has already arisen, to enhance good that has not yet arisen and to enlarge and perfect good that has already arisen, and to always cultivate the mind by these efforts. Right mindfulness is applying one's thinking at all times with a clear mind, observing the body, the senses, the mind, and the elements, and overcoming greed and that which arises from it. Right meditation is to free oneself from craving and evil and to reside in all levels of meditation. These, my friends, are the teachings on the Four Noble Truths imparted to us by the World Honored One.